Hello, welcome to Columbus, Ohio. This is Rachel Miller with Color Splash. I just did like the most beautiful Caribbean inspired sort of piece. I didn't go into it thinking Caribbean, but the, that is definitely the vibe I got. And I love it so much. I'm gonna try and do one more. And so last time I started with my pillow all the way down, already down. I'm going to pour it out this time because I want y'all to see exactly how thick my base actually is. I mean, I am starting with a fairly thick base. Honestly, I, I could thin this down a little bit, grab some Liquitex pouring medium and kind of lighten this up a little bit but I don't really need to. You know, I get a really nice result with it like this, so I'm not gonna really mess with it too much. But um, I think you'll notice with a lot of other pearl techniques, um, the base is very fluid, almost like milk or even, dare I say, slightly watery. And that's because of the techniques that you're seeing being employed in those pieces. Uh, my technique is a little bit different and um, that's why I like to start with a thicker base. And honestly, I, <laughs> I just really made this technique up. It's not that I learned to do this a certain way. This is just sort of organically started happening that the more I've painted and the more mistakes I've made, I sort of came up with this method of doing things and it's just worked for me. So you really do have to kind of find what works best for you. I mean, I, I there was a time when I was getting recipes from everybody and following them exactly to a T, but sometimes it's fun to experiment and kind of tweak those recipes and come up with your own. And so, through trial and error, that's kind of what I've been doing this past year is sort of coming up with my own style and um, recipe for this whole pearl thing because I have been hell-bent on cracking the pearl code. I feel like it is the, at least for me, been the most elusive, most difficult type of pour to get right or to actually get the result I want and that's sort of been like a challenge to me in my head to, to figure out how to do it. So anyway, let's start painting. I am going to start with one of my all-time favorites, as you all know, which is the um, Payne's Gray by Arteza. It is both blue and gray all rolled into one. And I love it. I cannot get enough of this color. And I'm, I'm not really doing a flower per se. I'm doing kind of almost this loose, I don't even want to call it a clover. I guess I get it could be a flower, like a four petal flower. Anyhow, what you see here is not at all how it's going to look in the end. That's for sure. And if you are going to kind of fast forward and jump around, please, please, please at least stay, watch the final result. Because what you see happening in the beginning and in the middle doesn't really give away what the final result is going to be like. It's always kind of a fun surprise. Okay, moving on, I am going to use my Neutral Gray by Amsterdam. And I am touching these colors, kind of layering them. And then I'm going to do a second pass where I kind of let the gray stand on its own a little bit. I just do kind of a shorter petal where the gray just sits on the white. And 
next I'm going to grab my Titanium Buff by Amsterdam. So, I will say this in every single one of my videos. Titanium Buff by Amsterdam or Parchment by Liquitex Basics. In my opinion, most important color I'm putting down on this canvas today. The reason I get such 3D looks like you can almost reach out and roll the pearl cells around with your finger um, type of cells is because I'm building a lot of texture and dimension into them with this titanium buff color. It just adds a certain amount of shading that creates this very 3D effect. And I really just stumbled upon this by accident. I was doing a piece that was just all neutral colors and I couldn't figure out why my pearls happened to look so extra good in that particular piece. And then it dawned on me that it was actually the titanium buff that I was seeing that was creating the special effect. Um, next, I'm doing a little bit of Prussian blue. I know it looks very similar to Payne's Gray, but it is distinctly far more blue than Payne's Gray is. So that's why I put both of these shades in. Okay, boy, my paints are really sinking into this. They did not sink so much in my last painting. Okay, next, a new color that I just got, and I love it. It made such a big difference in my last painting. It's called King's Blue by Amsterdam, and oh my gosh, is this a gorgeous color, guys. It is a blue-gray. It, it almost looks as if they took brilliant blue and just added a little bit of gray to it. I mean, it is a gorgeous color. Love it. And speaking of brilliant blue, Got to add some of that. Whoopsie, that was not a very pretty petal. Thank goodness the flower I'm making now has, isn't something you're going to really see in the final result or I'd be in trouble. This is kind of one jacked up looking flower. Okay, next I'm going to go with Turquoise Green by Amsterdam. Love this color. Talk about your Caribbean color. This is definitely a Caribbean color. Just makes me think of the ocean. Oh, wish I were on a beach somewhere right now. Moving on, I am going to grab this custom color of mine that I have nicknamed Parakeet. It is simply a mix of um, Amsterdam Olive Light Hue and Artist Loft White. They're mixed pretty much one-to-one. -one. I can't say 100%, but that's pretty close. They're about one-to-one. -one. Makes a really pretty color. Next, I'm gonna use my cadmium, cadmium Yellow Medium Hue by Liquitex Basics. Such a cheery, beautiful color. I mean, what good is a day at the beach if you don't have some sun, right? Gotta have a little bit of sun. And this is one sunny color. Okay, then I'm going to use a little bit of this Deco Art Soft Gold. It is decidedly more gentle than 24 karat gold is. 
And for whatever reason, it reacts a whole lot better with the pearl base than the 24 karat gold does. Then I'm going to come back in with a little bit more of my Payne's Gray. Not a lot, just a little. Just don't want the gold to be the last thing I put down. And then I'm going to bring in a little bit more of this neutral gray color. And then lastly, a little bit more of my titanium buff. And then I'm going to grab my cell activator. Actually, I'm going to try to slide some of these. Excuse my reach, guys. I just want to move some of those colors. Okay. <clears throat> I used way too much of this last time. So I'm going to try to ease off it. I'm just going to make a little pool in the center. I really don't think I used so much. It was just that my blow dryer didn't move it around the canvas very well. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my blow dryer and on the cool setting, I'm gonna blow this out. I'm gonna start by widening that center pool just a little bit. No, it's me. It's the angle I'm holding this blow dryer that's the issue. All right. That was what the trouble was. I was holding it at a terrible angle. Okay. Woo! We've got these beautiful colors again. I'm very excited. Okay, I just need to grab my handy dandy toothpick and a paper towel. And I'm gonna start it getting rid of some of this black and creating more pearl cells. I wish I had brought my straw out, but I did not. I would have blown a little bit of this excess off, but that's okay. I'm gonna take care of it now. So don't judge based on all of the black you're seeing here because the black is definitely going to go away because what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going around in a circle and just gently scratching at the bottom of my tile with this toothpick and then wiping it off with my paper towel in between. Really important that you wipe it off in between or you'll just end up moving cell activator around. I really stumbled upon this method by accident one day. I accidentally jabbed one of my palette knives into the center of one of my black hole pieces where the cell activator was and then just watched in awe as all these pearls just started lifting towards the surface. And I was like, aha, let me grab a toothpick and see if I can make this happen on purpose. And then sat there in just awe of how simple the technique was and what a great result it creates. Now, what you probably can't see from your vantage point is that I've actually got pearl cells popping up all by themselves without my even scratching or poking. 
and that's normal. That is what I would expect if I left this piece alone and just walked away from it. I would expect more pearl cells to start developing and to work their way in towards the center. The reason I'm doing it this way is so that I can choose where these cells go. And it also helps me grab onto some of the color that's underneath this black. So these pearl cells end up having a lot of the color that you saw me put down on the tile um, in the sort of halo part around the white center. Ooh, I am getting some gorgeous cells, guys. Holy moly. It is so gratifying when a piece comes out like you hoped it would. And I don't want to jinx myself by saying that too soon, but so far I am seeing some like gorgeous stuff happening and I am really excited. Like really, really, really excited. And I almost didn't video this one. I'm trying to go quickly. Now, if my camera cuts off, I'm posting this anyway because my phone's memory is almost at capacity. I desperately need to get a new phone. I think I only have 128 gigs on this phone and it's not enough if you're making videos, I learned very quickly. I filled my phone so quickly. <laughs> I guess I could get an external hard drive and start purging. That would probably make sense. Anyway, the moral of my story is if this video suddenly stops, I apologize, but I'm posting it anyway, because I want you guys to see as much of this amazing tile as possible. And holy cow, I cannot wait to show you the cell that popped up all by itself. It could not be any more spectacular. It is like aqua blue with rings of green around it. Oh my word. to work on my spacing. Sometimes I get these in some perfect, beautiful rows and other times not so much. So see, there's room, there's always room to grow and improve. Like I'm so hard on myself, I I can already see a million mistakes in this piece, or not mistakes, but things that I know I could do better. And here's the difficult part about judging the right amount of activator. Like, yes, it looks like there's a lot of extra excess activator left over here. But the problem is, if I don't put down enough, I can't blow it across the entire tile. And that means I won't get the amazing cells and lacing that I'm getting right now. So it's kind of a delicate balance with this. And every time I just kind of cross my fingers and hope I get it right. 
but I don't always, you know, sometimes I screw this up just because I kind of developed this method doesn't mean that I don't screw it up. I definitely do more than I'd like to admit. Oh my gosh, some of these cells are just bananas gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I literally cannot get over the colors. Some of these colors are so electric, it's startling. All my family are getting artwork for Christmas this year. I hope they like the colors I'm choosing. Be ready guys. This is what you're getting for Christmas, mom, dad, sister, both sisters. Goodness gracious. Oh, I could squeal like a little girl. I'm so excited at how gorgeous this is. I can, as I move towards the center, my activator is getting thicker and thicker and it becomes more and more difficult to get these pearl cells to pop up. So I'm getting ready to stop. I'm just hoping to elicit a couple more in a couple specific places if I can get them to come up. There we go. I'm kind of scraping the paint over and up to get them to pop up in a couple of these spots that are being stubborn. It's kind of a pulling up and over and up motion. I'm just kind of experimenting as I go, seeing what will pull them up. Ooh. Okay, well this is definitely a method that works when the cell activator gets thicker, pulling it from the color from underneath. I'm literally scraping across and up, across and up. So I'm sort of dragging the paint with me. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, I cannot wait to show you this. Wow, look at this tile. Is this gorgeous or what? These colors are insane. And the lacing is in this aqua, shades of aqua. It's so be Come on, focus, phone. I don't know if it's reading or not, but all of these lacing lines are in the most glorious shade of aqua. It's like I can see it clearly, but I don't know that it's being picked up well on camera. Like the aqua lacing is to die for. Look at how gorgeous this is, guys. Look at the gorgeous, subtle halos of color on these pearl cells. And look at that guy right there. Oh my God. Talk about a Caribbean looking cell. This, that guy right there. Oh my gosh, he's gorgeous. And then these, just this magical, like ombre halo effect of blues on some of these pearls. Like, oh my gosh, they're just staggeringly beautiful to me. Holy moly, they're gorgeous. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I'm absolutely loving this color array that I've got going. I didn't use all those, but most of them. I mean, the Caribbean style colors I'm getting out of those are just outrageously gorgeous. So I'm excited to do another. I'm going to set, set this guy aside and move on to another 
Wow, that's interesting. Huh, it's a strange looking cell there. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. Please, oh please, if you like this video, please click like and subscribe. Your support has meant so very much to me. It's really hard to start up a new channel and I'm just so humbled by the amount of views I've been getting. It just really like, it means so much. I wish I could hug each and every single one of you. So thank you so much. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you're having a fabulous day like I am. Please come back and watch me the next time. Happy painting y'all. Bye.